So far in this series, we explored how to block out a landing page, create a few repeat grids, and add and edit visuals created in Photoshop to sharpen the design. In this video, we're going to take a look at responsive resize and how you can quickly share your designs for feedback. There may be times when you're designing that you may wonder how things will look on different size screens. Instead of spending loads of time restructuring or redesigning each and every screen like you would in Photoshop, responsive resize can intelligently enlarge or reduce the size of your artboards with a drag of the mouse. To start off, I'm going to duplicate this artboard by holding down Alt or Option on my keyboard and dragging over to the right. Now you may notice that the responsive resize option is off by default for artboards. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now that it's enabled, watch what happens when I resize horizontally. Many of the elements are nicely shifting across the artboard, but there are a few that have a mind of its own, and that's because we need to give XD a little bit of help. For the navigation indicator at the top, we need to make sure that it's in a group with the navigation links. So in the layers panel, I'll select both the repeat grid and the line, and then group them with command or control G. Next, the repeat grid at the bottom wasn't shifting with the rest of the elements because it wasn't perfectly aligned in the center of the artboard. This can easily be fixed by either dragging it until it snaps in place, or by pressing the Align Center icon at the top right. With those fixes in place, let's try resizing again. You'll notice everything now shifts beautifully, and while the image does its best to scale, it may need to be adjusted a touch. A simple double click will let me make that change. Great, now that we have our two artboards, it's time to share it around to get some feedback. Traditionally, requesting feedback isn't always simple, especially when multiple designs are involved. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent saving individual files from Photoshop, then emailing them all to clients. XD makes that process much simpler. At the top right, you'll find the share icon, which will allow us to publish our prototypes and design specs. For this project, we'll focus on publishing a prototype. Here you can give your project a name, choose whether or not to allow comments, in this case we do, open in full screen, show hotspot hints, and for added security, you can require a password or even create a private link. For now, we'll keep it public, but only people with the link will be able to find it unless you post or embed it publicly. Once you've set all your options, hitting that big blue button at the bottom will start the publishing process, and then give you three options at the top. You can grab the embed code, copy the link, or open in a browser. And this is what a published prototype looks like. Your first artboard will be front and center, and additional ones can be viewed by clicking on the arrows at the bottom. You can scroll to make sure everything looks good, and if they were wired up, you'd be able to interact with it right from here. But one of the most important aspects of publishing your prototypes is feedback. If you enabled comments, anyone with the link can jump in and provide suggestions. And if it's something very specific, they can even drop a pin to show you exactly where they're referring to. Putting on my developer hat, I may want my designer to make the indicator bar a touch smaller. I'll drop a pin and leave a constructive comment. Back as a designer, I'll see a notification pop up from my Creative Cloud desktop app, alerting me that a comment has been left. I can now jump in and quickly make those changes. In a future video, we'll discuss more in-depth prototyping and how you can also share design specs with your developers.